Hi everyone, in this video I just want to show you how to find the Laplace transform of a step input signal. So to begin, let's draw our simple block diagram so that we know what we are working with. When we convert everything to the Laplace domain, that includes our input signal. So knowing how to do this is very important. So we need to take our input signal and convert it to the Laplace domain, which we represent with capital letters and our time variable becomes the complex variable s. So, if you remember, the Laplace transform of a general time function is the following, and our input step signal is represented mathematically as a time function like so, which makes sense because it is basically being flipped on, if you will, at time zero. So, let's apply our input time function to the Laplace transform formula. This leaves us with the following. But let's remember something about integrals. We can split them up into different regions as they are simply determining the area under our function. So, by splitting it up, we are not actually changing anything. For this one, it is probably pretty apparent that we should split up the integral where the change occurs. So for us, this happens at time zero. However, if your step function looks like the following, then you would have your integral from negative infinity to two and not zero. So, since this is a compound function, it is a function with two or more equations, let's apply the input values. So zero initially and one for times greater than zero. If you're wondering why we integrated from negative infinity to zero and not just started our Laplace transform at zero, I just wanted to show you why this is often the case. In practical problems, a time less than zero really doesn't make much sense, so we typically start the integral after zero. However, it is the exact same thing. The left integral is going to go to zero. This is because the left integral is going to go to zero, as we can move our zero outside, and no matter what anything multiplied by zero is, it's just going to be zero. Therefore, now let's focus our efforts on the more interesting portion, where the input signal turns on. So let's take the integral of this term, which results in e to the power of negative s times t over minus s. And the bounds of our integral are from zero to infinity. Applying these bounds to our integral, it is clear that we are simply left with one over s as our negative one will cancel with our other negative. So that is our Laplace transform of a unit step function beginning at time zero. Earlier I showed you how you would proceed if you had a step input signal beginning at a time that is not zero. But what would happen if our step input signal was some other value, some other magnitude other than one? Well again, the solution is simple. In this step here, you would simply factor out the constant, which is the magnitude of your input, and then you would proceed in the exact same way. So at the end, you would end up with a over s and not one over s. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding of how we take the Laplace transform of step functions. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment.